everybody has this hand out here. It's kind of the same as what it passed out before. So it's just kind of a run through. We're going to go through the same pattern that we do with all the other joints and just kind of do a review and then we'll go into the actual, the, all the details of it. So we're going to go through and just review this and then we'll go through the details after this. All right, so basically we'll start with what are the, the nerve tissues. Basically we're starting from about here down. I mean we went to the elbow, so we're doing the forearm, the hand, and the wrist. All right, so then what are the bones, inert tissue starting with the bones from the forearm, hand, and wrist? Okay. So what, what are these again? Okay, and then we go through, I'm not going to name them all right now, but basically the carpals. Okay, you have a proximal row, you have a distal row. Okay, and then what's this here? Okay, and then what are these? Okay, and then what's this joint right here? No, what's this? MCP. So we have uh, All right, so then, so we have what's what's this one? So that's going to be right here, right? So then, uh, what's this one? MCP? Right, so that's right here. Okay. And then, what's this one? Right. And then this one? VIP. Okay, so you got Carpal metacarpal, metacarpal phalangeal, proximal lateral phalangeal, distal lateral phalangeal. And then what's different on the thumb as far as the phalanges? Right, it's only two, so you have the, I don't know what you call this, proximal or distal. I would just call it interphalangeal joint of the thumb. So, then what else as far as inert tissues? What else is there? Yeah. Cartilage. So that's basically just going to be the cartilage that lines the surface of all those joints. Okay, what else? So we talked about bones. What holds bones together? Ligaments. So there's going to be some specific ones that we're going to talk about. And I have down on the bottom here what's What's retinaculum? It's a what? Yeah, you can talk about it on this area here, the flexor retinaculum. But a lot of times we talk about retinaculums as far as what they are is just, it's kind of like a ligament. It goes around and usually holds tendons in. It's usually going to be around here and then we'll, we'll have some more at the, at the ankle too. But specifically, we'll talk about the flexor retinaculum, which is significant because we have the um, carpal tunnel. All right, so how are those inert tissues of the hand, forearm, hand, and wrist going to get into? Okay. Yes. Boosh. Somebody said it? Yeah. So a good old boosh. What's that? Punching somebody. Yeah. There's a specific one that we'll talk about here with this. It's, it shouldn't really be called boxer's fracture because if you're really a boxer and you know what you're doing, which knuckles are you going to use to punch something? Right here. Okay. It, 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 could be a, uh, it could be a brawler's fracture probably. Because, you know, if you're going like this, right, you're going to nick this here, and then what happens is it breaks right here. Is that what you did, buddy? Is that? I was wondering. That's how she did it. <laughs> street fighter, street fighter's fracture. Okay, so then yeah, it's usually going to be some kind of trauma. So you're going to be breaking bones, tearing ligaments, things like that. All right, so then what do we have for the joints of the forearm and wrist and hand? Let's start from the proximal end. 
name the joints from the two bones that they go between. So, what's this? Radial. radial. And then, just in a general sense, what do we call this? Carpal. So, radial carpal, carpal, and then ulnar carpal. And then, what's significant about this joint right here? Is there anything that's right there? There's a few places where you have them in your, in your joints. No. First is around, on the outside of joints. What do you have right here? And oh, here. Yeah. So that's the other thing down on the... What did you say? What's that? What did you say? It's a, a cartilage. Or a disc. We'll call it a disc. I mean, obviously, yeah, there's cartilage in there. But it's a fiber cartilage disc. Just like you have at the sternoclavicular and then the intervertebral discs. And specifically, it's called the triangular fiber cartilage complex. Although, actually, when you say triangular fibrocartilage complex, the word complex tells you that there's something else there, too. So it's also ligaments, but it has to do with this uh, disc that's here at the distal um, ulnar carpal joint. All right, so then we have just intercarpal joints. I mean, sure, you can name them specifically the scapho and, you know, all the specific joints and there are specific ligaments that go across each of those joints. But you'll see that we'll just divide them into proximal row and distal row of the carpus. Okay? And then and then that's the rest of those joints that we talked about there. And then of course they're gonna have ligaments that go with them. So then what are the range of motion planes with the forearm wrist and hand? Okay, what's this? Flex extension. What's this? Not a part of Yeah. Well, it's usually called deviation. So this would be towards what? What's this bone? Radial, Radial deviation. Lateral deviation. All right. Then. Uh, the next joint that we're really talking about, although we, you know, we have some specialized motions here at the, at the proximal thumb joint here, but then at the MCP, what, what occurs at those joints? Yeah. Maybe there's a little bit of, well, what they call there was abduction, adduction, okay? Because when you're doing your dermatomes, I mean, myotomes, right? There's some of that involved, all right? And then we'll get into the close pack, loose pack in the lecture. So then what are the contractile tissues of the forearm, the wrist, and the hand? Yeah, right. Some of the muscles are going to come in from the forearm that we already talked about with the elbow. But, so then those are called extrinsic because the muscles are coming from another area and going into here. Or you can have intrinsic muscles that are in the actual hand that, you know, are distal to the wrist. So there's a lot of things that we want with thumb and fingers like this. So then, how are those going to get injured? <coughs> Contractile tissues. Repetitive over the Yeah. Get your tendonitis, that type of thing. You can have, sure, you can have some traumatic injuries, but most of the time it's going to be repetitive, overuse type stuff. And then, so how did we talk about that we're going to evaluate contractile tissue? It's like when we did it in the elbow? And what else? Active range of motion, but... Yeah, stretching and range of motion. 